Hello YouTube, XCT here. Today we are solving Previce, an easy Linux machine on Hectorbox that involves a command injection and pathway jacking. So let's start by looking at the port scan. We have SSH and we have an Apache web server on port 80. So let's have a look at this website. And here we got some file storage um, application. We have a login here by some default credentials, maybe admin admin or guest guest, but it doesn't work. And if we look at target here, we can see that Burp identified a couple of pages here, probably from the website uh, source. So let's look at these. Um, let's look at the first one here, which is accounts. And here we just get redirected to the login page. Um, but if we actually look at this request, we can see it here at the bottom that we actually got to this account page. We were just redirected away from it. Here we can see that only admins should be able to access this page. We see some requirements for username and passwords, and we see how an account is registered on this page. So we have this form here. And what we basically need to do is we need to send this to the repeater. Can send it again here. And now we have to build this post request here to register a user just by looking at the source here, right? You can see that there's a password, confirm, username, and submit. So let's do that. So first of all, we change it to a post request and then we do username. Remember it must be five characters, right? So let's try that. Um, it's redirecting us again, but let's see if it actually created our account. And this indeed worked. We have an account on the page and can access a couple of different um, menus here, right? Now we are on this account page again. Now we can actually see it. And also we have this files um, thing here where you can, I guess, upload files, but also you can download this site backup.zip. So let's do that. Let's also look at the other points. Um, yeah, nothing too interesting going on here, I guess. Here we can request some log data, but we don't really know what to do with this. So let's have a look at this um, source code now. So if you download and unzip this, you get the source of the application. You can see the register page here. Um, also this config file here, which is pretty interesting. We get a password here. It's always a good idea to save every password you come across. Let's look a bit further. And here this logs page looks pretty interesting. Um, we can see that it's actually taking input from the user, which is here post parameter, and it's using it in an exec call. So it's using a Python, a script name, and then the user provided parameter. So it's very likely we will be able to inject something here that will give us some um, good execution. So let's try that. Let's go to this logs page. Now it's in burp. Let's send it to the repeater. And we saw it's a post parameter, so let's change that to a post request again. And then we need to look back here, dalem. And now we should be able to just um, put some payload here, right? So let's just do a bash command substitution and then we curl out to our IP address. Get the file called X and pipe that to a shell. And for this X file, we just use the general script here I always use, which is this one, which is just trying a couple of different ways to get a reverse shell. So let's start a listener here. And then we should be able to run the script. We also have a web server listening, hosting this file, right? Let's see, and here we go. We got a shell as doubled up data. Now at this point, you could run um, a privilege escalation script like linpeace or something like that. But remember, we got this MySQL password from earlier. So let's first get a PTY here, and then we're going to connect to the MySQL database like we saw in the script. And here we had the password. All right, let's explore that a bit. 
And there's this accounts table, so let's see. And besides the user we created, there's also this malware user here, just the author of the box and the password hash. So let's try to crack that one. So the usual way you would do that is you would just run John with the rockyou.txt word list on this hash. But in this case, it won't be able to crack it because it's actually misdetecting the type of the hash. And you can see the warning here in the beginning. It's also telling us it could be this other one. And in this case, it really is the other one. So we have to provide format and then mb 5 crypt long And now we will be able to crack it. All right, we can see that the password cracked. So copy that. Now we should be able to connect with this user. Here we go, and we can read the user flag. So now for root, um, we can run a previous script again, but a quick thing to always check is just if you can execute anything as sudo. And here in this case, we can indeed execute something. We have this script here we can execute as root, so let's have a look at the script. So one thing that sticks out here is that gzip and date both don't have a full path provided. And normally this isn't really a problem because in a sudoas file, they reset the path. So if I were to add my current directory to the path and would place a malicious gzip binary and then call the command with sudo, normally what would happen is that my user provided path wouldn't be used. Um, but in this case, they modified the sudoas file. And you don't really know that. Um, this is just something you have to try out. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a malicious gzip binary here. Or really just a script, um, because that's a bit easier. And we're just going to give bash the third URD bit. Make it executable. And what we also have to do is we have to add our current directory to the path. So let's do that current directory and the old path. And now if we run this, we should be able to execute our gzip version. Let's see. Here we go, it worked. We can run bash minus p and we are root. And this allows us to read the root flag. Um, the reason this works, just like I mentioned, is that they modified the file here. Um, you can see these three options here are default and they have been commented out. Normally, this end reset would, wouldn't allow you to have a user provided path and also the secure path here would limit it to these directories where we can't write. So the only reason this works is that the defaults here have been changed. Just to, to clarify that this is not really a common thing. That's it for this box and thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel and get access to a private lab environment, you can find the link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you.